New year, new science here on the Science of. A chance to delve into the very cutting edge of scientific discoveries. Exploring the furthest reaches of scientific understanding within video games. So naturally, for our first video of the year, we're going to be taking a look at a prehistoric dinosaur who eats little mushroom people. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Science of. The show where I take a look at the science behind your favourite game shows and more. Today, we're diverting from the Mushroom Kingdom by a couple of miles to take a look at the science behind Dinosaur Land's most famous residents. No, I'm not talking about the Koopa Kids who are all named after famous musicians. I'm talking about Mario's fateful dinosaur papa and occasional pit drop into a Yoshi. The Yoshi species have been a firm staple of the Mario franchise ever since their initial introduction in Super Mario World on the original SNES, all the way back in 1990. Yoshi was the brainchild of graphic designer Shigafumi Hino and Super Mario World's main director Takashi Tenten Tezuka. Originally meant to be a horse that Mario could ride throughout Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but owing to technical limitations, was pushed to the third title in the series. Whilst you imagine Yoshi as being a greener than green dinosaur, his design has been refined and altered between games over the course of the SNES and Nintendo 64 eras of gaming. With Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, introducing Yoshi as looking a little more turtle-like, having a more squat and round figure with longer arms and almost human-like hands. With his saddle evolving into more of a shell and the spikes on Yoshi's head becoming rounder with time. But in this video, we're focusing on this special dinosaur's more fantastical abilities. But maybe we'll skip the most fantastical, the magical bubbles that turn Yoshi into planes, trains and automobiles in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island and focusing more on his natural abilities, especially his super stretchy tongue, which he can use to grab enemies to turn into eggs, as well as a ledge grab in Smash Bros. In fact, now that I think about it, this ability of Yoshi sort of makes him a bit more froggy than dinosaur doesn't it? When discussing the pros and cons of Yoshi's tongue, which admittedly isn't a sentence I ever thought I would have to say, it's important to note that Yoshi's a reptile. And whilst there are some creatures from the reptile kingdom which catch prey with their tongs, most of them are amphibians, with all manner of frogs and toads using their tongs to catch prey, ranging from the smallest of insects to much larger prey like other frogs. But these impressive froggies are nothing compared to the powerful tongue of Yoshi, which is able to take in enemies as large as the Mega Guy, giant Shy Guys which as you'd expect, produces a Mega Egg. But just how is Yoshi taking down these enemies? Because whenever he gobbles up a Goomba or a Shy Guy, they don't exactly react or try to escape. What is Yoshi doing to them? Well to figure this out, we can look to the Amphibian Kingdom. When we talk about catching prey with tongs, we need to remember that the tongue itself is just one big flat muscle. And when frogs are capturing their prey, they're able to manipulate that muscle with incredible speed and versatility compared to most muscles in the human body. Scientists studying the mechanism behind the system, yes they exist, have found that the frog species Ranopipians is capable of capturing an insect in under 0.07 seconds, five times faster than the human eye can blink. This means that the frog's tongue can accelerate at a rate of 120 meters per second squared, 12 times the force of gravity, which means that relative to the frog's tongue, a tiny 0.5 gram fly can feel as heavy as 6 grams. Not too impressive from a human standpoint, but this does mean by all accounts that the little fly should be slammed into a corner between bits of dust and the coins that rolled under the sofa instead of ending up in the frog's tongue. This force keeping the prey on the tongue is the most challenging part of the whole process. During the tongue's retraction, the adhesion force consists of both surface tension force caused by the roughness of the tongue and the viscous force caused by the saliva produced by the frog's salivary glands. This combined force only needs to be greater than the 6 grams of force produced by the fly, but that still requires a surprisingly in-depth equation to calculate. I mean look at this mess. All you really need to know is that the adhesion force, thanks to this equation, is now equal to the viscous force. But in any case, we know that the sheer force of using the tongue as a whip isn't going to be enough to get the Goomba into Yoshi's tongue. So we know that the viscous force is pretty sizable, and Yoshi has got to be slobbering up a storm. Okay, so one option for Yoshi is that they're able to catch all these enemies by surprise and just scoop them up without a care in the world. Now I don't know about you, but looking at these frames pretty closely, it definitely doesn't look like Yoshi is able to swallow enemies faster than I can blink. And once Yoshi has captured an enemy, they're not exactly in a hurry to escape his stomach. We know that Yoshi is going to have to produce enough viscous force to keep the enemies on track for his tongue, as well as killing them the moment his tongue touches them, to make sure that they don't wriggle as he digests them. Continuing with the general Yoshi is a giant frog theme we've got going here, we're going to take a look at some poisonous little amphibians. 
Poison dart frogs are a group of colourful frogs found throughout Central and Southern America, from the family Dendrobatidae. These species secrete noxious chemicals through granular glands that cover their skin. These poisons will attack the nervous system of any predator that comes near these frogs, resulting in convulsions, muscle contractions, salivation and eventually death. Now there are a ton of different poisons secreted by amphibians, with many species of frog and salamander having these poison glands. But the most dangerous toxin produced by frog kind is called Batrachotoxin. Batrachotoxin, or BTX, is an extremely potent cardio and neurotoxic steroidal alkaloid, which attacks victims in two ways. As a neurotoxin, BTX attacks the nervous system. The nervous system relies on the depolarization of nerve and muscle fibres caused by an increase in the sodium ion permeability through the cell membrane. Through binding to these sodium ion channels, the BTX toxin influences the ion selectivity of these channels by forcing them to stay open. This increases the permeability of the channel proteins towards larger cations. The lack of depolarization permanently blocks the nerve signal transmissions to the muscles. This limiting of nerve signals has a significant impact on the physical conductivity of heart cardiac muscle tissue, causing arrhythmia, extracystals, ventricular fibrillation and other changes which all result in a giant heart attack, which would probably explain why none of Yoshi's victims struggle when being consumed. This does bring up an interesting question. Why doesn't Yoshi fall off his proverbial perch if his mouth is full of batrachotoxin? Well, why don't poison dart frogs come to their own poisons? According to a team of researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, Stanford and the California Academy of Science, it's possible that the poison dart frog may have evolved a natural sponge protein in their cells which prevents the action of small molecule toxins that target sodium channels. Whilst these proteins haven't been discovered directly, there are sponge-like proteins in pool frogs called saxophilins, which bind to a similar poison called saxitoxin. So it's definitely not out of the question for a single protein to be responsible for protecting Yoshi against any self-inflicted poisoning. So there we go. Mario's most iconic pal is more like a poison-spitting frog than a dinosaur, who can take down enemies five times larger than himself. Pretty impressive considering his cuter-than-anything persona. But I've got to admit, it's kind of surprising that Mario survived past childhood, riding on Yoshi's back, when Yoshi can use his tongue to pop the magical escape orb surrounding Mario whenever he gets hit by an enemy in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. So that's one science down for the year. Only 25 to go! So if there are any franchises or scientific ideas that you'd like me to cover in the future, please tell me in the comments down below. But I suppose that's my New Year's resolution broken already. I did say at the end of last year that I did want to try and do a few fewer Mario videos. But, with the Mario movie coming out in April, I suppose I will have to dust off a few scientific facts to take a look at the science behind Chris Pratt's Mario voice. As always, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subjects or topics that you'd like to see me cover in the future then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until then, this has been the Science of Yoshi's Island. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game based content then you can join me over on Twitch, where I livestream 3 times a week playing all manner of games suggested by the community. Or if you want to support the channel even further, then you could also